back with another reaction. I'm going to be faceless today, and we're going to be reacting to the just released Jimmy Howard video. NBA fans are not ready to hear the truth. Let's go. For anyone who's a Yikes. Is this one of those hot take stuff? I assume. Imagine playing seven. Like, yo, what the fuck? Ah, uh, the good old hot take. The necessary evil of the sports world. Through the good ones, the bad ones, and the downright atro- Curry would have been the GOAT if LeBron didn't beat him 3-1. I mean, he would have had the goaded season. I could see that. Ocious ones. We once again find ourselves- Taking Prime Harden over Giannis, not gonna lie. I- Somebody averaging 30 points, 60 points, are you- It's racking our brains, trying to figure out how some people come up with this nonsense. But today, I've done the brain racking for you, and found some of the hottest NBA takes on the internet. So, buckle up. This may be All right, let's get to the, the, the hot takes. It's been a couple months since our last edition of NBA Hot Takes. So, despite my... Shaq says he knew that the Lakers season was over last year when Steven Wonder shot a brick at LeBron James. <laughs> I'm Ed still reeling from our last batch. We've got some new scorchers to take. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, in this picture, too. It's the um the Russell Westbrook Clipper building. <laughs> Take a look at. You'd think I'd know better than to peer into the cold, soulless abyss of casual NBA fandom by now. But I Dylan Brooks got to retire. After yes. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> that is I can't a, help myself. One of the funniest and I've got ones. nothing better to do. So here we are. Now, this first one, some people are not going to be happy with. This NBA fan says, in terms of excitement, Steph is this generation's Jordan. Yeah, I can and see And I agree. I can Steph see may not be this generation's best player, but when it comes to drawing eyes and attention and putting on an absolute show, there's no one that does it like Stephen Curry. The deep threes, the antics, the fact that he's still on the same team that drafted him, it all adds to the Steph experience that fans across the globe love about watching him play. This man has kids on the other side of the planet rocking his jersey trying to knock down look-away threes. This I can do them. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a professional ball player by any way, shape, or form, but I got it on me. This relatively Facts. small, unassuming couch. athlete who wasn't a superstar recruit, rising through the NBA ranks and winning titles amongst giants. How can you not love the guy? Is there anything as thrilling as watching Steph come down the court? Defense absolutely scrambling, trying, hoping they can stall the inevitable. But it's too late. Steph is pulling up from 30 feet, and the outcome is already set in stone. Curry, long distance. Bang! There's just nothing like it. The fans love Steph. He's the people's champ. And I agree that in terms of excitement, he is this generation's Jordan. Now, with Nikola Jokic making a run for his third straight league MVP, the man is on track to making NBA history. But with all that success has come more scrutiny for his shortcomings. Some of these critiques are absolutely ridiculous, and some might be warranted. A couple days ago, Stephen A. Smith said that Jokic potentially winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back league MVPs, despite his lack of playoff success, is almost criminal questioning the validity of his awards. And like many fans of the NBA, this guy feels that this criticism of Jokic isn't fair because he's always made the most of what he's been given in the playoffs year after year. And I understand this line of thinking. I mean, the MVP is a regular season award after all, so the playoffs really shouldn't be brought up in this discussion. But it is, and it always has been. Since the beginning of time, NBA fans have used the playoffs as a bit of a litmus test to try to validate or invalidate regular season. That's also going to do with the fact that it's happening after the, what's it called? It's either during the playoffs or after the playoffs. So when they see the team not win, it's like, okay, well, what was the point of giving the MVP award? I mean, people were wanting Steph to win in 2021. He didn't even make it to the playoffs. He lost twice in the play-in. Probably should have won one of them, if I'm being honest, if at least somebody stepped up a little bit. And if everybody actually closed the game out with him the right way. But nonetheless, he was still a candidate. I mean, look at this. Speaking of the Warriors, this was supposed to happen in the first round against the Utah Jazz if Memphis didn't win. 
you were supposed to see this classic jersey with uh, Steph's name on it, and he was going to take down uh, Rudy Gobert and the Jazz. I know Donovan Mitchell is on it, but mainly Rudy Gobert, because let's be honest, he's the big problem. But anyways. He's an MVPs. It's practically a rite of passage for any all-time great player. And Nikola Jokic should be no exception of this. Must we not forget, Giannis was getting eviscerated for coming up short in the postseason after winning back-to-back -back MVPs. Exactly. Or when people called LeBron a choke artist for winning two MVPs but failing to win a championship. Mm -hmm. Or when Kobe was stiffed out of possibly multiple MVPs because the Lakers just weren't a real contender at the time. You can give me all the excuses in the world, and it won't really make a difference. Because no other all-time great player was granted any excuses either. If a player wants to ascend to all-time great status, he will be held to an all-time great standard. The man is on track to winning his third straight MVP, and he hasn't even made the NBA Finals. This is unprecedented. Now, is this criticism unjust? Maybe, but why should Jokic be spared from intense criticism when no other great player was? We've seen voter fatigue and narratives and postseason failures prevent countless players from Kawhi? winning their regular season MVP. Post why is Jokic exempt from this same standard? Once a player receives a certain level of praise, no excuse will be sufficient in explaining why they haven't won a ring, or even come close for that matter. This is how it's always been, and I completely disagree with this take. Now, just a couple days ago, Damian Lillard put on an absolute clinic when he scored 71 points against the Rockets. 71 points. The man hit 13 threes and was a perfect 14 for 14 from the line. He did it all. I mean, this was a masterpiece from Dame. But mm -hmm. leave it up to NBA fans to find the fault in this performance because according to some fans, Dame... No defense. It was against the Rockets. Don't count. Not hating, but 71 against a team that's at the bottom of the conference. What? And also, let's not... And if that If that's the logic... He did it in four quarters, y'all. Donovan Mitchell got 71 in overtime. Michael Jordan had 69 in overtime. And that's the, and Michael Jordan makes basically speaking on that because he had the highest game score of all time. If he didn't go to OT, it'd probably been a little bit lower. You know what I'm saying? Dame did it in four quarters. Okay? I don't see what the problem is. Dame's 71 points weren't all that impressive since he did it against one of the worst defensive teams in the league. You heard that correctly. Scoring 71 points in an NBA game is no longer impressive if you do it against a bad defensive team. And this take is so unhinged that I almost don't want to even address it. But I'm going to anyways. Now, I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. But you can't tell anyone I told you this. Okay, let's Most hear big games throughout NBA history are against bad defensive teams. Surprise! Pretty crazy, right? Wilt's 100-point game in 1962 was against the Knicks, who were the second-worst defensive team in the league at the time. Ouch. Kobe Bryant's 81 in 2006 was against the Raptors, who Big were ouch. also the second-worst defensive team in the league. And David Thompson's 73 in 1978 was against the Pistons, who were the ninth-worst defensive team in the league at the time. In fact, this is the case with nearly every all-time big scoring night throughout NBA history. LeBron's career high was against the Bobcats, who were the worst defensive team in the league. Shaq's career high was against the Clippers, who were also the worst defensive team in the league. And the most pathetic LA team in the league at the time. Steph's career high was against the third worst defensive team in the league, and Michael Jordan's career high was against the ninth worst defensive team in the league at the time. Speaking of Even Jordan's Donovan point. Mitchell's 71 oh, earlier this season was... Oh, again, 11 minutes in, I mentioned two players. Coincidence? I think not. Against the fifth worst defense in the entire NBA. It's like some fans have to search for a reason to discredit some players. Dame could have scored 71 on the worst defensive team ever, and it still would have been an incredible accomplishment. You could put me in front of your local youth league championship team, and I couldn't score 71 points in 39 minutes. Every season, every single player gets a shot to go crazy on bad defensive teams. There has been thousands- If this is the logic, the concerning thing is if we get to a point where players can score 100 points, like it's regular, like not like regular, you know how back in the days when 50 points were a really big deal? If that's the case with 100 point games and later in life, yo, people are going to use the same logic with Dame against those 100 point games. That's a concern. 
thousands of opportunities for players to use these bad Wait, teams as their David punching bag. And seven? yet only three players I'm have ever tripping. topped this 71 point explosion from Dame. This performance was historic, and this take is horrendous. And also, this is the second one the same season, too. We gotta give credit where credit's due. Now, this fan here says Michael Jordan is sensitive, but he gets a pass because he's good at basketball. And I agree with how- If that's the case, LeBron. LeBron. LeBron should get the same uh, treatment. ...of this take. Michael Jordan was sensitive. People will excuse his behavior as competitive, but everyone in the NBA is competitive. Jordan couldn't take criticism whatsoever. In fact, his famous quote is literally a statement of how things people did and said about him really got to him. But he didn't get a pass just because he was good at basketball. He gets a pass because every time someone pissed him off, he always went out and proved them wrong. They said Clyde Drexler was his equal. He didn't like that. And so he went out and stomped the man in the NBA Finals. They said he wasn't as good when he came back from his first retirement, so he added that to his list of reasons to be an absolute menace and three-peated for the second time. You can be as sensitive as you want if you back it up. I think most NBA fans would consider Kevin Durant sensitive, but if he followed up his tweets with more championships and absolute dominance over the NBA for the rest of his career, those tweets would be an afterthought. Now, our last take is a scorcher, and not even for a split second does it add up in any way, shape, or form. This NBA fan says, Back then, we used to celebrate three-peats. Now kids are out here celebrating four titles and ten tries and call it greatness. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. Now clearly, this is referring to LeBron James, to which I genuinely ask this fan, and fans who think like that. Imagine them. spending half your seasons in the finals. Imagine. And imagine spending over 90, high 90 percentage in the playoffs. Soon to be higher if he does make it into the play and end the playoffs. If he does stick in, but I, I hope they make the playoffs, okay? I was wrong about a take about Russell Westbrook being on the Lakers for this season. They somehow pulled it off. Shout out to them. But dang. That is sad. I mean, by your logic, then, we should be appreciating Steph for being able to win a championship post-73-9, and uh, blow 3-1 lead three times. And also, the one he could have came back from 3-1 if they were able to hit that shot if Steph hits that shot and they go to the next game seven somehow they just find a way to win in Toronto then yeah he might as well be deserved you know that like this do you really think LeBron's career hasn't been great so I feel like it's gonna be hard to repeat even in this era because there's a lot of talented teams and if we're looking at the conferences I think there's just only like two teams that are not in both sides that are not really trying to compete and then everybody's just high 30 40 wins or 50. I don't even think anyone's at 50 yet, but we're getting there soon. So, at that point, repeating is going to be a tough one because everybody wants to win. Right? I mean, really? Is it possible that we can celebrate any ring that any player wins at any time? Or has 2017 Warriors? Has the bar been established so high that if you aren't three-peating, it isn't truly greatness? All right, everyone, new rule. No celebrating rings or titles or MVPs or big or small successes anymore. We are only celebrating three-peats. Dirk's ring wasn't great. The bum only won one in 21 years. Boston's ring in 08, worthless. <laughs> Raptors in 2019, no, nope, No, 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 we do not, no. Nope. Bucks in 2021, Giannis and the gang, bums. We don't celebrate that. Get that out of here. I just can't believe some fans actually think like this. I mean, according to this logic, no one... You have to be an old head to say this, if I'm being honest. If you, Only old heads are saying it because they seen Jordan do it. They seen Shaq and Kobe did it. And that's about it. LeBron couldn't do it in, uh, in Miami Heat era. Unfortunately, the Warriors couldn't do it three times. Yeah, they had two chances. 2016, assuming that they are able to win in 2017. And 2019. And we're on pace to seeing a new team potentially winning it all. Hopefully, it's the Nuggets. I want to see the Nuggets win this year. In my opinion. One in the entire NBA right now should be celebrated. We need to drop this whole rings or bust discourse altogether. It's just silly. And it's a bad faith argument to discredit really awesome players. In fact, this same fan goes on to share posts celebrating the greatness of players like Damian Lillard and John Stockton. 4K? Angler, the pixels look the same. Don't look the same, my guy. Just like his truly elite. <laughs>
Okay, durable. Okay. Hand size of seven footer. Then why is he dunk? Dame stays with the blade. I find that I like how he's talking about this, but these guys won championships on the same team they were drafted by. I know Jordan played against the played with the Wizards. We let that slide, okay? But based on what we've seen, we know he's won. Ten. Who've never won a ring and most ironic and Steph's the Steph clone here apparently uh, he's got to see the real Steph hit win four in the same team on the same team and solidified his first finals MVP. Ironic of all, this fan goes on to say that the '89 Cleveland Cavaliers were the greatest team in franchise history. Literally, this dispatching a Cleveland team with LeBron, That's describing a team that was bounced out of the first round of the playoffs as the greatest. So not only is this line of thinking flat out wrong, it's disingenuous. A player doesn't need to pull off the greatest feat in the history of the game to be great. Greatness comes in many different shapes and forms. And apparently, so do takes on the NBA. And unfortunately, that's all the racking my brain can handle in one sitting. But y'all know the drill. Leave a comment say with this your all hottest the time, NBA but take. Still the make hotter, the, video the, same the way. better. Or worse. Hope you all enjoy it. And as always... Here's a hot take. Tell Ben to pass the ball to the rim and treat it like it's teammate. Then we don't have to tell him to shoot the ball. Y'all think it's fair? Fair? I think so. Until next time. All right, that's the outro. Look, I'm going to end it off real fast because I don't usually end the outros real fast. So drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, there's going to be videos popping up. Peace.